everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you in my class. My name is Kabir Murtala from Computer Science Department and I'll be taking you introductory to digital electronics and uh, the course code is COM112. Yes, now the course modules Already I've taken you through audio sessions and uh, today we shall be discussing on the practical involvement during our previous sessions. Uh, today we would uh, emphasize on number system and uh, codes and code conversions. The study session one that is number system and number system conversions and code and code conversion and seven segment display. Well, number system. Number system. These are systems that involve the use of counting to represent figures. And uh, ever since we are aware that we use stones, we use counters as a cover of uh, soft drinks in order to get our figures address. And uh, we have the Arabian uh, numerals, we have the Roman numerals, and we have uh, the other ways of counting. Anyway, the computer started from these countings, these number systems, and the number systems such as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like that. But under this session, we are going to be discussing about the, the binary the, the binary system we'll be talking about the octal system then the decimal system then we have the hexadecimal system these we use them in in computing our data. Since we say our computer understands machine language, that machine language is more or less like the binary system. This binary system involves zero and one and that is to the base or radius of 2 that is you cannot go beyond 1 but you would have 0 and after that 0 you will not have 1 to the base of 2 just like in your probability as I've said in my previous classes I said 0 and 1 the entity of this 0 and 1 is to the power of 2. You cannot exceed 2. You cannot exceed 1. That is 2. That is binary system. And for the octal system now, that is to the base of what? 8. You will now have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. You can't go beyond this 7. And that is the reason why we have it to the what? Base of what? 8. That is 0. This entity is now, by the time you start counting from 0 to 7, you now have 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 8. That is the power of base 8. And we have decimal. At least we can hear decimal. We are familiar with this. This one, you know, base. Uh, it's a 10 and it will start from 
zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. You can't go beyond this because the entity of all this is from one that is from the zero when you want to count the entities this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so that means you can't go beyond this and for the hexadecimal you can see now we have two combination here hexa so this one has ten and this one has what six so by the time you add this up to the base of 16 so now you now have zero i would shorten this to nine then you now have A, B, C, D, E, and F. That's to the base of 16. So now, by the time you count this, let's use this for the counting because it's the combination of this exa and the decimal. So you now have up to this, that is 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So by the time you count, that is to a what? base of what 16 by the time you count all this you count from this that is 9 10 11 12 13 14 and 15 that's to the base of what 16 so now the base the base the base of any number system plays an important role in understanding the number system and the conversion between them those days we have computers that understands binary system. This binary system, you can only have zero and ones. And you will have it, you will find it difficult to, to manage between the computer and the human. Thereby, you need a translator. A translator that will translate whatever you have, you know, imputed on your system. Such that whenever you are communicating with your system, you need a translator. Those days when the computer started with uh, uh, the gigantic in nature, it consumed electricity, and uh, you know you find it difficult to communicate with the computer. You have hundreds of scientists that would be in charge of translating between the computer and the human. But you know another uh, way of addressing the system came on board. That is the octal system at least trying to move away from base 2, that is radix of 2, and to decimal, and which is a bit closer to human. And like that, the machine keep, keep improving from that decimal to hexadecimal up till the computer we have today, such that we have other means of uh, conversions. And however, how people can use computer without anyone translating it, but we have other means of translating between the binary to the, the human language, that is from the higher level language. All right, binary system. The binary digital, digital system and computer work with the store data using binary numbers such as zero and one, represented by two voltage level, that is high and low. So in this case now, whenever you have whenever we have zero, that means low. Whenever we have one, that is high. So this we can say it is switch off. And this one you can say it should switch on. So like that. We can say magnetize or demagnetize. And here we say magnetize. And like that. So we know our current. You have life and you have the neutral or up. So that means if our current is moving, our life, the other one must be must be half. That is zero. So between these one and zeros, this is how we have our pulse, and this is how we have the flow of communications. And our computer understands that language best. But human, by the time we press A, 
on our computer. The computer would see it as 0, 1, 0, 1. That is, is the meaning of the A. But we cannot be dealing with this because we find it difficult. It will be too cumbersome. You'll be dealing with 1 and 0, 1 and 0, 0, 0, 1. What's the meaning of all this? But with the advent of these conversions, the number system, it will help our understanding. If you want to become a good programmer, you need to understand the binary system and how the conversion takes place. So these transistors are stacked as gates in the computer and are used to perform mathematical functions. These gates take in only two inputs, as I've said, 0 and 1. Perform, to perform an operation on them and bring out the output in computer system, combination of two states, 0 and 1, are used to represent information, just as I've said, that all these are information. So by the time you are sending the signal via the keyboard, the computer understands and you, have, you get your return on the monitor as A, or so as it may be. The binary number system has two as its base integral, as I've said earlier. Quantities and express as we have a formula for that. I have said in my previous class that from my right hand side, by the time you want to do the conversion, let's assume you have 1, 0, 1, 0 in this case now. By the time you are trying to convert this, you must start from the right hand side. That is, this is to the base of 2. That is, 2 times 0 plus 2 times, but you must put your power, 0, 1, times this other 1, plus 2 raised to power 2, times this 0, plus 2 raised to power 3, then we move to the last one, times 1. So this is how to do the conversion in binary to decimal. So in this case now you have 0, 1, 2, 3. That's to the power. By the time you want to convert this now, this anything raised to power 0 is 1. But times this 0, you now have 0, all nullified, plus 2 raised to power 1. That's 2 times 2 times 1. That is 2. Plus 2 raised to power 2, that's 4, plus, times 0, that is 0. Then plus 2 raised to the power 3, that's 8, times 1, that is 8. By the time you add this up, you will discover that you now have the 10. And according to our chart, the one I wrote earlier, by the time you get to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Eight, nine. By the time you get to the ninth position, you now have ten, and that's our ten. If you are using the hexadecimal, you now have E. So that means that is our E. So by the time you press this A or you press ten, the computer will see it as this. This conversion is from binary to decimal, and we have a formula for that. And that formula is N equal to A naught, then 2 raised to the power D naught. That is the formula for this. Then you have plus A1, 2 raised to the power 1, then plus A2, 2 raised to the power 2, then plus A3. 2 raised to the power 3, like that, continuously, up to a n, 2 raised to the power n. So, like that. So, our n, you give the number of variables that could be supplied into that. The decimal number system, that is to the base 10. I discussed that earlier. So, let me run an example under that. For the decimal 
uh, number system. I have said earlier that you have from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. That is to base 10. To base 10. So now, let me justify this. We are familiar with our units, tens, hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands, and like that. So now, we are going to justify that. Let's assume you have 7,854. 7, By the time you would convert this, you will see that we are back to this our point. Now, using our formula, this is 4. You now say, okay, this is base 10, mind you. We will now borrow that. Instead of using the 2 for that binary I used the other time, we are going to use 10. So now say 10 raised to the power 0 times 4 plus 5. That's 10 raised to the power 1 times 5 plus 10 raised to the power 2 times 8 plus 10 raised to the power 3 times 7. So from this now, we can further break this down. Anything raised to the power 0, I told you, according to our law of indices, is 1. So 4 times 1 plus 10 raised to the power 1 is still 10. 10 times 5, that is 50, plus 10 raised to the power 2, that is 100. 100 times 8, we have 800, plus 10 raised to the power 3, that is 1,000. 1,000 times 7, that is 7,000. So, furthermore, we will discover that by the time we add all this up, this is going to be 4, 50, 800, 7,000. We will now have 7,854. That is arriving back to our answer. This is a justification of the scientific experiment on these uh, expressions that by the time you have anything, this power of uh, the zero, you have one. N to the power of 1 is that same number, that's 10. N to the power of 2, that is this 10 times another 10, that is, we would have 100. So don't say 10 times 2, no, but rather 10 times 10, it will give us the 100. Then multiply by this 800. Then this, you wouldn't say 10 times 3, rather, you would now say 10, 10 times 3. 10 times 10, of course, which will give us 1,000 times 7, that is 7,000. And these will now be base 10, because that is with the power. The earlier one I did was base 2, that is the binary. But by the time you convert it using this other means, you now say base 10. So now, let's go to the octal. The octal, I say this base 8. Base 8. We can't go beyond that boundary. So now, when you say base 8, I can use this now. I'll just rub this off. And this has changed to base 8. This base of a thing is to help us in managing our data, in computing our data. Without these systems, we would find it difficult to manage our data. And the device that would manage that would not be able to work effectively and efficiently. So as a, as a computer scientist, you need to understand what these systems require so that you can have a very accurate result and you can have a reliable result. All right, for the octal number system, 
is a number system whose base is 8. The base 8 means that the system uses 8 digits to, des to the decimal number. It uses the digit from 0 to 7, as I've said, 0 to 7. And all the 8 digits from 0 to 8 have same physical meaning as that of the decimal number. Each octal decimal digital is determined by the examining a group of 3. That means you can have 3 bits. 1, 1, 1. That is the meaning. Or 0, 0, 0. That's the, the 3 bit consecutive bit in the binary number system. That is 8. What will give us 8? What will give us 8? That is 2 raised to power 3. So that is, we now have 8. And then 2 raised to power 3 will give us 8. Alright, computers do not understand information in the octal number system and must be translated to binary for the computer to understand. Octal system uses a group of three binary bits, that is, the spacing. For example, let's convert 27 in this case. 27 base 8. So before we can go ahead, we need to understand this. This is base 8. To convert it to base 10 now, you will now need to do just like what we did earlier. We now see 8 base power 0 times 7 plus 8 again. Raised power 1 times 2. So in this case now, we can further break it down. 8 raised to power 0 is 1. 1 times 7, that is 7. Plus 8 raised to power 1, that is 8. 8 times 2, that is 16. So by the time we add this up now, we now have what? 23. This 10. So that is to tell us that you can see the figure. In base 8, the figure increased. But to the base 10, it is 23. So we should take note of all this. In this, at least you have me, I say, computer do not understand information in octal number system and must be translated to binary for computer to understand. You see, during the design of computer, from the binary to decimal or octal and decimal, there was some changes or difficulties in managing some of these data. So we, the, the, the scientists had to design another system in such a way that our data or, or information will be best managed. And so to say, it led to the another design of what? This, this octal, from octal to decimal, from decimal to hexadecimal, and, and many more like that. All right, so if we, if we must go ahead, if you want to convert for hexadecimal, in hexadecimal number system, in hexadecimal number system, the value of base is 16. That implies that there are only 16 symbols, as I've said earlier, or possible digit values. This number system uses alphanumeric from alphabet to numbers, combination of alphabet and numbers, but they are limited. That is the number 0 through 9 and letters A, B, C, D, E and F. Where the A, B, C, D, E and F are single bits. Representation of decimal value 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15 respectively. That is zero for hexadecimal in this case. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then we now have A. That is our 10. We have B. We have C. We have D. We have E. And we have so now let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So that is to the base of what? 16. 
So it requires only four bits. You see here, we use four bits. So that is two raised to power four. We have our 16. That is that was the reason why we had the space, the positionings, and the way we use these combinations alpha numeric from alphabet alpha. alpha numeric so the combination of decimal and the alphabet and the position in 2 raised to power 4 that is 16 so it can tell us that okay we can't go beyond this so we can only use so we have some design that use this but we see discover that this might not be sufficient for our interaction with the computer so and many more came on board such as the, we'll be discussing that in our next session there's the XS3, uh, the Grey Code, the BCD, the Ipsidic, then the ASCII 7, and the ASCII 8. So, um, it requires only 4 bits to represent value of any digits. The table below shows the hexadecimal symbols and their binary decimal and octal equivalents. These hexadecimal numbers are indicated by addition of EDA and OX prefix or an H suffix. Um, here, let me try and put some explanation on the table here. We'd have the zero as the numbers. Zero, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, and um, D, E, and F. So this is the hexadecimal number. Let's use X and the, the binary in this case for since we say it uses four space these zeros will be represented in four positions in four bits in four bits so to get our one you now come the zero 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 one However, there is another way by which it can help us in getting these combinations. You can just get something like uh, 1, 1, 1, 1 in 4 places. Such that you have uh, 1, you have our 2, 4, and 8. We can't go beyond this level. This usually help in guiding to get the combinations out. For the 2 now, you know we can get our 2 there. You now have 0. Zero, one, zero, and for the three, you can get our three from this and this. So of course, zero, zero, one, one, and for our four, we can get it on the the second uh, value there, from my left to the right. One, zero, zero, and for the fifth one, we can get it with this and this. You now say zero, one, zero, one. That is our five, and our six get it here between the two uh, middle ones zero one one zero and the the seven one you can get it this that is zero one 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 and the eight you can get it here easily one zero 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 and the nine you can get this and this you now come over here one zero zero and one and for this that is ten you know it's represented with the a so of course we can get our ten with this and this so one we get one zero one zero and for our b that is this is ten eleven okay you know, our eleven we can get it this this and this so you now have one zero one one and for this that is twelve can get this, this, and and this. Okay, this and this. We can get our twelve. We now have 
Together with this, it's one, one, and one. So, like that. So, that's our 14 and the 15. Of course, we have no choice than to represent all one, all ones. So, like that. So, in other words, you can see this is uh, somehow similar to our combinations combinations where you, you do that in your mathematics Ma, ma combination and com, uh, probability probability and combinations all these are what we make use of and before you know it we get our gadgets conversion from decimal to radix to convert from decimal that is base 10 to other radix you divide the number continually by radix and write the remainder on the right until you get to zero. Divide the decimal number continually by two but for binary, by eight for octal, and by 16 for hexadecimal representations. Keeping all the remainders on the right, the radix, that is the base expression, is built up from bottom to up, from bottom to up. Now, having done with this, let's do that conversion here now. Conversions. Conversions from decimal. decimal to a radix. When I mean radix, I mean binary. That's this. So now let's convert 38 to decimal. To binary. From decimal to binary. We now say 2. 2 in this we have 19. Remainder 0. That's what that point was saying earlier, that whenever you, you divide, you use two to divide, and you get a remainder, you note it. You note whatever remainder you have, even if you don't have a remainder, you note it. So, two in 19, we now have, that is, nine, remainder one. So, two in nine, we now have four, remainder one. 2 in 4, we have 2, remainder 0. 2 in 1, we now have 1, remainder 0. 2 can also go in 1, you now have 0, remainder 1. So we can't go further because nothing can go into 0. So the other point was that you start. You pick your value from the bottom. This is the bottom to the top. The arrow is showing us that we are going to take our resultant from the bottom to the top. So, therefore, if you are to convert this now, that is 38 base 10 to, to binary, to radix. In this case now, we now say 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and zero base two and that's it so in this case now we can also convert this back to 38 base 10 how do we do that for our check for our check zero one two three four and five so we will now know that this zero is gone this one is there, we have two. And this, we have four. We plus this. And this, we have 
8. This is gone. This is also gone. So this is 16 and this is 32. So we are now left with 32 plus 4. That is 6 plus 2. That's 38. So that's not magic. That is how to get that. So this to convert 38, this 38, this same 38, to base 2, which we have just done now. That is radix of 2. Then we can also convert that to to base 8 and also convert to what? Hexadecimal. That is base 16. We have just done for the binary. We are going to go on the, the octal number system now. Let's do that. In this case, you know we used 2 for the other division, the divisor. Now we are going to use 8 instead of 2. We now say 8 into what? 38. So if you are to go with that, you now say 8 in this, you now have 4. Remainder 6. 8 in 4. You will see that you have some a bit challenges there. You now have uh, 0. Remainder what? Remainder 4. So in this case now, you now start also from the bottom to the top. That is 46. This what? 8. Because you are using this to do the conversion. Is that, you are just using the divisor. That is to the base of that system. That is, your 38 base 10 has been converted to 46 base 8. You can see the value. The value is tending to increase because it's just like you are using 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's the meaning to do the division. If it is 2, you are using 1, 2. That is to that, desi that uh, design of that system. If it is base 16 that you want to use, that means you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 16. That is to that base at which you want to design or you want to uh, get your resultant from. That is what that system is all about. Then to, to use conversion, to do the conversion from, base, uh, from the decimal to base 16 now, we use this. Instead of using 8, you use... 16. So now, 38 divided by this 16, you have 2 remainder 6. So 16 in this 2, you have 0 remainder 2. And you will now pick from the bottom to the up because this is positive value. If it were to be negative, you have to come down. But if it was to be positive, you start from the bottom. You are moving from our Cartesian graph. We know our Cartesian graph. Immediately you are moving up, it is positive. When you are coming down, it is negative. If you are from the right, it is positive. When you are coming left, it is negative. So we borrow this from the Cartesian graph and the scientists acknowledge that. That you start from the bottom up. And like that. So you discover that we get our answer as 26. You can discover that there are changes. This is B16 in this case. Look at the base 10. 38. For base uh, 8, you have 46. That is uh, base 8. And you have 26. For what? For our B16. You can discover that the value keep on changing. But here, you discover that it's a bit high. And this also going down. That is, by the time you are doing the divisions, using this system, you get this. Using this other system, you get this. And using the other system, you get this. So that is, this can also be done by grouping the binary bits in group of three for octal and group of four for hexadecimal. Now, look at this. 
for 38 base 10 we had 100110 zero, zero, one, one, zero, base 2 to convert to octal the octal you know we had 46 you can also get this by dividing these two such that you can have our four in three bits you can have our four one zero zero and our six as from this you can borrow from this as well one one zero and you can see that that was where we got the bcd the binary coded decimal the bcd binary uh, coded decimal so whereby we use but we still have some challenges with this in our next session we'll be discussing that and and for the for the binary and for our de hexadecimal now hexadecimal you can also but that one hexadecimal involves four bits in this case you know here we have used three bits for that so now let's use let's get our hexadecimal we can use x to get it our hexadecimal says our 38 base 10 is equal to what 26 base 16 and in this case you can break this down that is where can you get our two you now have zero zero one zero that is for our two and for our six you now have you have this zero one one and zero so that is where this was gotten so but you discover that if we keep using this would have assuming now we have a longer number let's say we have uh, 7,845. We'll write this 7 out, we we'll write the 8 out, we we'll write the 7 out, uh, 4 out, the 5 out. So you discover that, or we have millions. You discover that we keep on and it will lead to the wastage of memory. Okay, having done with that, conversion from radius to decimal. Of course, uh, to convert from radix to decimal is by the summation of powers of 2 for binary and powers of 8 for octal and the powers of 16 for hexadecimal. I think I discussed uh, this earlier. But there are other ways we can also get this done. Because if we have, uh, if you have, let's assume you have for, to convert 10, 10, 1, this is it has it. alternatively if you have something like this we can easily consider where we have the uh, the ones you can see we have one here one two three four and five so we can get this out by just doing um, two raised to power zero times zero plus two raised to power one times 1 plus 2 raised to power 3 plus 1 then 2 raised to power 5 times 1 so by getting this 1 2 3 and 5 we are interested on the ones with these positions so by doing that we can also get this out and by the time we convert this we see this one will give us 0 we have 2 this one zero, this one two, and this one eight, and this one we have what? That is 32. So by the time we calculate this out, we have 42. Is 10. These are other ways we can also do that uh, conversions. So uh, uh, we shall be stopping here today, and uh, we'll continue in the next session. Thank you very much for listening. And uh, once again, my name is Kabir Murtala from Computer Science Department, and uh, uh, I'm happy to have you. Thank you.